Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Thank you, Brother Keith, for your leadership. Thank you, Russ. Uh, thank you, my brothers and my sisters. It's always encouraging to see you in the house of the Lord. I thank God for your presence this morning. And those of you who are worshiping God online with us, we thank you that you have given us the privilege to come to your house. We pray that God's blessing and God's grace will meet you at the point of your needs. Shall we go before the Lord in prayer? Dear God, how I need your grace to deliver your word this morning, realizing that the person does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So I submit myself to the leadership of the Holy Spirit and the authority of your word. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of our heart all together, be acceptable in your sight. O God, my strength and my redeemer. Let all of God's people say amen. amen. Today I want to emphasize one aspect of prayer as I minister to you on this series, Going Through Gethsemane, a Lenten emphasis on prayer for 40 days. Remember, we are in this time of Lent. Lent has been a time where we prepare ourselves we do a spiritual inventories of our lives, uh, a time where we encourage each other to give up something. Part of the challenge of uh, Lent is not only to give up something, but as we observe Lent, we also see Jesus doing something of great significance. Jesus went through Gethsemane and Jesus prayed. In fact, Jesus encouraged the disciples to pray. One of the reasons to pray, Jesus said, the Flesh is weak. The spirit is ready. The spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. How we need the spirit of God. How we need that spiritual energy so that we may be able to do the will of God. When we sing to the Lord and say, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Prayer takes you to that place where God clean your heart. Because when you pray, there is something that happens. Prayer brings God's presence. Prayer takes you into the presence of God. When we pray, my brothers and my sisters, we create that intimacy, that affinity with God when we pray. Prayer brings God to us. Prayer takes us to God. We empty ourselves when we pray. And then we are filled with God's presence. When we pray, we are participating to the divine nature. Remember, Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. And every branch that is connected to the vine shall live. And every branch that is disconnected from the vine, it shall die. Prayer is the connector. Prayer connects us to the divine, to the vine, so that we may experience that divine nature. The scripture that we read from the book of Ephesians, it says, and pray in the spirit on all occasion with all kinds of prayers and requests. Pray in the spirit on all occasion with all kinds of prayers. When you read chapter six of the book of Ephesians, if you start on verse 10, it is about the armors of God. The scripture says to us, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Be strong in the Lord. Don't be weak. It means that you are to encourage yourself. You are to encourage yourself in the Lord, not in your own strength, but in the strength of God. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the, in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armors of God 
so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. I like this language. So that you may be able to stand your ground. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10, as we go, you read it, encourage people to say, uh, uh, you, you are to take the full armor of God so that you are able to stand your ground. It means you may lose your ground. If you are not careful, you may lose your ground. And I'm afraid to tell you the church in America has been losing a ground. The church has been losing a ground. Christians have been losing ground. Here it says, so that you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. Then put the belt of truth back all around your waist with the blasphemy plate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel in addition to all this take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil ones take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god now listen listen and and a conjunction and conjunction and and pray so when i was reading this text i said hey 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 hey, hey. that's important there and conjunction you know some of you have learned english you know and connect two things of the same equal am i right come on somebody yeah. yes come on pastor speak a little bit of english <laughs> and it put two things that are equal terms. So, and pray. Verse 18. And pray. I noticed that. So, prayer is part of the armors of God. Prayer is part of the armor of God. How are we going to stand our ground? Jesus said it right in Gethsemane. Pray so that you do not fall into temptation. Pray because the weak is, the flesh is weak, and the spirit is strong. Pray so that you can stand your ground. Stand firm. Jesus is saying, we have to pray. So my brothers and my sisters, for this land, I'm inviting you to this time of prayer. Because as we go through Gethsemane, as we pray in Gethsemane, Jesus taught us to submit to the authority of God. Jesus gave up his Preferences. You know, one of the challenges that we have in our world today is preferences. Everyone has their own preferences. Now, you know, you are here at 11 o'clock because you prefer a traditional worship service style. That's your preferences. You know, there are those of you, if one day we say uh, the band is going to play at 11 o'clock service, some of you will say, preacher, you will never see me again. Your preferences, your test is 11 o'clock traditional worship service. There's nothing wrong about that. That's your preferences. And there are those who come at 9.30 because they love the noise and the guitar. And someone one day said to me, is that real worship? I say, yes, it's worship. The Bible says make a joyful noise in the house of God. That noise I like. <laughs> so, 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 so it's preferences. And the Bible says also, be silent in the presence of God. So to be silent, to be quiet in the presence of God, all these are type and form of worship. Preferences. Everybody has their own preferences. Jesus had his own preferences. He did not want to die on the cross. He prayed and said, God, I pray for this cup to go away. If you read the text in Gethsemane, Jesus is saying to God, I know you are able, you can do all things. If this cup will pass away, he knew about the suffering, he knew about the cross. But then he surrendered, Gethsemane, a place where we share our human emotion with God, that it's okay to talk to God about our concerns, about our fears, about our, our hopes. It's okay to talk to God about our failures, about our success. In Gethsemane, we share our human emotion with God. In Gethsemane, we surrender to God. We give up control. In Gethsemane, we surrender. Jesus said, not my will, but your will. 
My brothers and my sisters, as we pray for these 40 days of Lent, we pray to learn to surrender, to give up control and say, Lord, you are in charge. I will let you control my life. I surrender all to you. I will set aside my desire to be in control. Oh, how we desire to control. That I will set aside my desire to control. In Gethsemane, Jesus is teaching us to submit to the sovereignty of God, not my will. You know, many times we have those unanswered prayers. You know, we have prayed and asked God to do something for us. Sometimes our prayers are not answered. Our prayers are not answered the way we want. In Gethsemane, we are learning, learning to say to God, not my will, but your will be done. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, Gethsemane is a place of surrender, where we surrender our preferences. Like I was saying, everyone has their preferences. The United Methodist Church right now is going through a difficult time. Again, preferences. We have a group of people in the United Methodist Church that says their preferences, they're above scripture. They are above scripture. And there are those who say, no, we, we are going to be under scripture. So we have a differences, a debate over those that think they are over, above scripture, and those who feel like we should be under scripture. And there is debate, it's preferences again. So the world is full of preferences. But you see, when we know God, my brothers and my sisters, as we surrender to God, one of the things that we do, we give up our preferences. We give up our preferences. We affirm the sovereignty of God and the priority of God's kingdom. We say to the, God, not my will, but your will. God, I'll let go of my preferences for the sake of the kingdom of God. Pray, prayer is one of the armor of God. Jesus encouraged us to pray. The reason to pray, because we are weak. We cannot do the will of God without the help of God. So we are to pray. So today, my brothers and my sisters, I was reading a small booklet and I love an acronym that came forward, pray. Pray, that stands for praise, uh, 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 repent, okay? and ask and yield, pray, the word pray, you know, just a small acronym that came and I like that. And then I say, maybe I need to emphasize some aspect of prayers, pray, all right? Today we are going to uh, focus on praise. I, I would like to invite you to bring praise in your prayer. Prayer is more than just asking stuff from God. Uh, uh, the Bible says, and pray, okay? A and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. So I want to invite you to bring praise into your prayer. Praise into your prayer. Why is it important to praise God? It is important to praise God because we have received a command from the Lord that we always neglect. Psalm 150 says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It is a command that we are to praise God. There is something about praise because praise express admiration. You know, when you praise somebody, you express admiration. So there is something about praise. We need to bring in our prayers Praise, express admiration from, for, for God, express admiration for God. And you see, the Bible encourages us to offer our praise to God as sacrifice. Offer your sacrifice of praise to God. The Bible encourages us to lift up our hands as we praise God in sign of surrender. The Bible encourages us to sit quietly in the presence of God as our soul rejoices in the Lord. Scripture encourages us to sing along, to shout for joy. There is something about praise, my brothers and my sisters, as we express our admiration for God. You know, human beings, we are so self-centered and so selfish. We are so nasty. We are, we, we are so self-centered. There is a kind of narcissism in all of us that we love to talk a lot about ourselves. 
about our little accomplishment. You know, can I get a witness? I know I'm in the church. Somehow we feel the need to glorify the me. You know, there is that me, the ego in us. And we love to express admiration for our ego. Life is about praising God. When we praise God, when we bring praise through our prayer, when we bring praise to our prayers, we are focusing our mind on the object and the subject of our admiration, which is God. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So our mind becomes focused on Christ, becomes focused on the glory of God instead of ourselves. Listen to what scripture says. Psalm 69, I'll praise God's name in songs and I'll glorify God with thanksgiving. Psalm 95, come let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and exalt him with music and songs. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, when we bring praise through our prayer, praise help us focus on God, on Christ, the object and the subject of our utmost admiration. Praise is about expressing admiration. When we express admiration for what God has done, for what God is doing, and for what God will do. God, I praise you this morning for the privilege to be among the living. God, I praise you for my husband. I praise you for my wife. I praise you for my children. I praise you for my friend. I praise you for the job you have given me. I praise you for my church family. I praise you for my friend. Oh God, I praise you for the people you have brought in my life. Oh, come on. When you begin to focus on Christ and what God is doing, it changes your perspective of life. I don't mean to minimize the suffering or the challenge you may be going through. But there is something about praise that will help you focus on what matters in life. Oh God, I praise you for this beautiful day. I praise you for the sun as it's shining. When we bring praise to our prayer, it helps our mind focus on Christ. Now my brothers and my sisters, there is also something else. When we bring praise to our prayer, it helps us express admiration and it helps us emotionally to connect with God. Why is it important? Because sometimes when we go through difficult time, our emotions are affected. We feel low. We feel down. We feel like we have been abandoned. Or sometimes we have made mistakes in life and our mistakes just come in front of us and, 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 and make us feel like there's nothing we can do. There is something about praise when we are going through difficult time. When we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, when we begin to praise God in the midst of our challenges, praising God for who God is. God, I praise you because you are bigger than my mountain. God, I praise you because you are bigger than my challenge. God, I praise you because you are bigger than my disease. You are bigger than my sickness. God, you are great. I praise you. There is something we build when we praise God in the midst of our challenge. The Bible tells us about two men who praise God in prison. Come on, somebody. In prison, Paul and Silas, they were arrested. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 16 that around the midnight hours, they began to praise singing hymns, hallelujah, singing hymns to God and praising God in prison. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, can I be a preacher for a little while? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they praise God in the midst of the fire. When Nebuchadnezzar threw them into the fire, 
They say to the king, oh, be at peace. Our God is able to deliver us from the fire. I love their statement. Even if our God does not deliver us from the fire, we will not stop praising and worshiping our God. This is the statement of faith that we must have, the courage that we must have in our life, in our everyday challenge. Even if God does not heal me from my disease, I will not stop praising God. I will praise my way out. I will shout my way out. The devil will nev never take away my joy. Amen. You got to have an attitude in life. You got to have that attitude. Devil, you are not going to take my joy away. You did not give me my joy. You did not give me my peace. Oh, yes, gasoline can be $5 per gallon. I'm not going to lose my joy. All these are temporary situations. There may be rumors of war, yes, but it will not take away my joy. I know my life is in the hands of God. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, we need that attitude of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that we will sing, lifting up our voice in praise and pray God regardless of our circumstances. We must rise and say we are not victim of our own circumstances. We are victors with God. For he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. If God be for me, who shall be against me? That's an attitude, a choice that we must make. You know, when you praise God in the midst of the challenge, Praise bring a dimension of changing a dungeon of hopelessness into a place of hope. Praise change a burden into a blessing, a liability into an asset. Praise change what is negative into positive. You keep an hallelujah moment in the midst of your trials and tribulation. You know with God on your side, your peace is there, is a secure. This is why they were singing. They were singing. Now listen, Psalm 100 say, enter his gate with thanksgiving. Enter his gate with thanksgiving. Enter his court with praise, not with complaining. Not with complaining. So when you come here Sunday morning, you got to come with that spirit of praise. You got to come in with that spirit of thanksgiving, all right? You come into the house of God, you are excited. You don't wait for Brother Keith to play that nice melody for you to be excited. You are excited anyhow about what God has done. Enter his gate with thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for God is good and his love endures forever. When we praise in our prayer, when we are intentionally praising God, not only praise help us focus on God, on Christ, the object and the subject of our admiration, praise affect our feelings emotionally. It help us navigate the challenges of life. It help us stay above the waters. Praise help us build that intimacy with God. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, prayer, as we bring praise to our prayer, praise help us stay above despair. I praise my way out. I praise God. Praises. Praise, that's who I am. Praise, that's what I do. I praise God. Why? It's a choice that I have to make. You must choose to praise God. There is power when we praise God in the midst of our challenge. When Paul and Silas were praising God, there is some kind of praise that just shake the throne of God. God began to look at Michael, angel, and say, I hear some good praises coming on up there. Where are they coming from? Are they coming from Ford Chapel? No, no, the angels say, no, not from Ford Chapel. <laughs> they are coming from jail, from jail. Paul and Silas are in jail. And God says to angel Michael, go and do something over there. The Bible says the prison was shaken. The chains that were on Paul and Silas were broken. The doors were open. 
Oh, my brothers and my sisters, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego sing and praise God in the midst of the fire, Jesus appeared to them. An angel of God appeared there, and they saw the presence of the divine. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, in the midst of the fire, in the midst of the storm, when we learn to praise God, there is something, it is a choice that we make. I choose to praise God in the midst of my situation. I will not complain. And then when I make that choice, I say to my soul, Psalm 103, praise the Lord, O my soul. With all that is within me, praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Do not forget all his kind deed. Do not forget. Do not let your circumstances make you forget the kindness of God. Because God is the one who forgives all your sin. He is the one who heals all your disease. He is the one who delivers you, deliver your life from the pit. He is the one who crowns you with his loyal love and compassion. God is the one who satisfies your life with good things. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, his compassion, his love, renew themselves every morning. This is what scripture say to us. God's mercy, God's love, and God's compassions, they renew themselves every morning. So walk in the favor of God. Bring some seasoning in your life. You know, sometimes when you are in the kitchen cooking, those of you who love to cook, you know, sometimes you got to spice Put a little bit of seasoning, all right, to make it taste good. So praise, season your prayer life. Praise, bring some seasoning. Oh, when you praise God, oh, when you praise God, you express your utmost admiration to God and say, God, I love you. You are the best. There is no one else like you. You are my healer. You are my provider. Oh, even when you are broken, you are broke, you have no money, yet you are confessing, affirming God, you are the one that brings provision. You are sick in your body, yet you are confessing God, you are my healer. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, there is something. You are in torment, and then you are saying, you are my peace. God, you are my peace. You are my shalom. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, there is something about the name of Jesus. There is something about the name of God when we praise God. So I'm inviting you. Add some praise to your prayer. Add some seasoning to your prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Close to thee. As we stand to sing this closing hymn, may you express your utmost admiration for God. He's worthy of our praise. To God be the glory, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. Brother Keith, would you please stand?